Hi, my name is Laura Suggs. I'm here at the University of Texas at Austin in the Department of Biomedical Engineering. Um, this is my uh, co-author, David Hammers, who's in the Department of Kinesiology and Health Education, also here at UT Austin. And we recently published a manuscript in the journal Biotechnology and Bioengineering. This work was funded by the National Science Foundation as a result of the American uh, Recovery and Reinvestment Act, and that allowed us to hire David on to uh, complete this work. So in particular, we're interested in ischemic injury as a result of either permanent injury or, in our case, transient injury. In particular, we're interested in tourniquet use. Tourniquet use is widespread uh, over the globe. Uh, it can be a result of trauma um, to provide, uh, to reduce blood loss or to provide a bloodless surgical field. Published estimates are that over 20,000 tourniquets are used every day. And what we've established via our colleague in uh, the Department of Kinesiology, Roger Fair, in a rat model is that uh, tourniquet use can provide long-term or produces long-term functional deficits in rats. So we can uh, demonstrate measurable uh, function loss in rats out to two weeks. We've employed uh, this injury model to try to evaluate different uh, therapeutic modalities. In particular, we're interested in the growth factor, insulin-like growth factor 1. This is a growth factor that's important in skeletal muscle repair. It has a uh, number of different functions, including myoblast differentiation promotion, promoting proliferation of myoblasts, uh, survival of affected cells, um, and other th therapeutic benefits. So because of its uh, regenerative potential, we were interested in delivering this growth factor in a focal way um, using a delivery system that we've developed in my lab. This delivery system is based on fibrin. So fibrin is a result of the coagulation cascade. It's uh, cross-linked with an enzyme, thrombin. In our lab, we pegylate this material, so we uh, covalently bind it to polyethylene glycol. Polyethylene glycol is difunctional and serves as an additional cross-linking site. The polyethylene glycol can also bind IGF-1 and serve to localize it to the site uh, of delivery. Because it's based on fibrin, it can be cross-linked in situ and injected into the site of injury. And so um, what my colleague David is going to do is demonstrate how that injection system works. In order to make the pegylated fibrin gel, we uh, react fibrinogen, a uh, bifunctional polyethylene glycol molecule, and uh, IGF-1. And what this does it uh, causes covalent um, binding of a fibrinogen to IGF-1 and when we mix it with thrombin it causes a uh, polymerization through the normal clotting reaction and that's how we make our fi pegylate fibrin gel. So in order to load this for injectable use we load our thrombin to the syringe Then we load our pegylated fibrinogen into the same syringe. Still a fluid at this state. We mix it up. Then we inject it. In the animal, it will be injected into the injured lateral gastrocnemius muscle as still liquid. And soon after injection, it polymerizes. And we have a polymerized pegylated fibrin gel. We've demonstrated that IGF-1 can be loaded into pegylated fibrin, and we evaluated release of this growth factor in vitro uh, using ELISA and Western blotting techniques, and demonstrated that the free peptide can be released um, at physiologic concentrations up to 96 hours after um, incorporation. And so at that point, we looked at administering this IGF-loaded pegylated fibrin 24 hours after tourniquet injury in rats. And what we were able to demonstrate when we measured force production in the hind limb of rats at two weeks following uh, administration of this treatment, we were able to improve uh, functional recovery of the rat. So in controls where we just inject saline, what we see is that we um, get about just under 50% of maximum force production recovered at two weeks. 
When we deliver the IGF loaded pegylated fibrin, we see um, just under 73% uh, maximal force production. And that is statistically significant, and it's also greater than either a bolus injection of IGF at the same concentration or the vehicle, the unloaded vehicle alone. So what we have here is a system that can be injected directly into the hind limb following injury and improve cell survival, limit some of the detrimental phases that result from ischemia reperfusion, and enhance functional recovery of um, the injury.